A cordia falta goji ardesh hin fein. It is great to be here today with activists who are enthusiastic for change, passionate about the future, and determined to build a new Ireland. Make no mistake, led by our next speaker, we will deliver for all of our people. I am so proud to introduce the leader of the biggest party on this island, the woman with the vision to change Ireland for the better, the woman we hope will be our next Taoiseach, Uchtaran Hinn Féin Mary Lou Macdonald. <laughs> We meet in Dublin in a spirit of ambition, enthusiasm, hope for the future. Today we seize the day, chart new directions, capture opportunities that lie ahead. A new dawn is breaking in Ireland. We stand on the threshold of a new era. Friends, it's time for change. So much, so much has happened since last we met. Things have been tough for so many of you that join us tonight, struggling with an unbearable cost of living. I want to acknowledge your resilience. Under enormous pressure, you're holding the line, holding it together for yourselves, your families, your community. This crisis won't last forever. But you deserve the political leadership to support you through these difficult times and to match your hopes for the future. That's the job of good government. We are ambitious for change. Those ambitions aren't confined to Ireland. We send solidarity to people who endure imperialism, war, occupation, and the denial of human rights. We send our unwavering support to Palestine. Oh. Ukraine fights for its very survival against Putin's criminal invasion. We stand with Ukraine. And, and we will support you until that day when your beloved homeland is free from Russia's war. Russia's war must end and the journey to peace must start now. Ireland 
stands on the side of international law against those who trample on the rights of others, be it Putin's war or Israeli apartheid. <laughs> Though our world has changed, our values remain strong. In hard times, when the odds are stacked against us, when hearts are heavy with loss, we come together. In Donegal, Following the tragedy at Chrysler, families face the heartbreak of the empty chair. We can only imagine the enormity of your loss, but know that you are not alone. The nation wraps its arms around you. The outpouring of sympathy for Chrysler stretched far beyond our shores in acts of solidarity and condolence from the Irish abroad. In this moment of profound grief, we saw again that to be Irish is not just to be from a small island, but to be part of a very large global family who have built their lives in Britain, the United States, Canada, Australia and beyond. We are so very proud of them. They have kept faith with home. To our young people who once again depart our shores, you've been very badly let down, especially by the broken housing system. I want you to know that we are working hard to change things for you. We'll make Ireland the home that you deserve. So as you travel, enjoy your experience, work hard, play hard, but come home and be part of the new Ireland that we must build. We need you. The demand for change is strong and growing with the energy of a generation impatient to claim their future, to achieve a new Ireland. 100 years ago, Ireland was traumatized by partition divided by bitter civil war. A century on, we strive for a nation that honours and learns from its past, but isn't held back by it. This spirit for change was so powerfully expressed in May's assembly election. Sinn Féin emerged as the largest party. And for the first time, a Republican, a nationalist, a woman from Tyrone was elected as First Minister in... <laughs> in a state, elected in a state designed to ensure that it could never ever happen. Well, friends, it did. Michelle O'Neill, a First Minister for all. There's no turning back. There is now no job in the land off limits to anyone. The days of second class citizenship are over. A new generation moves together. <laughs> moves together to a new Ireland where everyone has the chance to realize their dreams, to push the boundaries, to exceed expectations, to succeed to change Ireland. Change means a place called home, a secure, affordable roof over your head. It means access to a doctor, to hospital, and to care when you need it. It means real opportunity, good jobs, decent pay, and the right to retire at 65 on a fair pension. And friends, Change means taking those final steps to full nationhood, ending partition, reunifying Ireland. This change, this change is no longer on some distant horizon. Change is now on our doorstep. 
It can't be stopped by the DUP, who refuse to accept the result of an election and prevent the formation of an executive. While they left workers, families, businesses without support, ministers like Conor Murphy stepped up. And the people of the North, the people of the North deserve, need, demand a government that works for them. This stalemate can't continue. British government dithering must end. They must immediately bring clarity, a timetable for concluding negotiations with the European Union and the restoration of the executive. But whatever happens, be clear that direct rule from London is not an option. <laughs> working, together, working together is the only way forward. Change can't be stopped by Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, now so joined at the hip that it doesn't matter to them which leader is Taoiseach, so long as it's one of them. So, Leo leaves, Michal goes in. Michal leaves next month, Leo goes back in. In, out, in, out. Political hokey pokey. That's the cosy club, my friends, that has run this state for a century. Well, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have had their time. They've had their chance. It's time for a new government, a government of change, a government for the people. Change can't be stopped by the chaotic Tories in London either. I mean, they can't run their own country without bringing it to the brink of financial ruin. They, they certainly have no right to tell the people of Ireland how to run ours. They attack the Good Friday Agreement. An agreement that's delivered 25 years of peace. A peace consistently defended by our partners in Europe, the United States and beyond. They disgracefully seek amnesty for their troops and deny victims of the conflict justice. They attack the protocol, an agreement that protects livelihoods and our economy. They care so very, very little about Ireland. Well, the Tories can leave governing of this island to the people who live here, and we will shape a better future together. That better future calls to us, asking the big questions of us. And I believe that this generation has the answers. This is our moment. Ireland has three big opportunities in this decade. The reunification of our country, the achievement of energy independence, and the power of our young people brimming with talent, ideas, and energy. Yet those in their 20s and 30s will likely be the first generation worse off than their parents. That's not right. We must renew the promise that if you work hard, you can get ahead and build a good life. This generation looks with fresh eyes and fresh hearts to the Ireland that can be. They know Ireland's success must be driven by inclusion and equality. That there's a seat at the table for everyone, for our traveller community, our ethnic communities, our citizens with disabilities, our LGBTQ plus citizens. And no words of hate from any pulpit or any stage will set us back or divide this generation. Our young people refuse the boundaries of yesterday. They reach for opportunity, for their shot, 
for their chance. And if we give them that chance, our young people will transform Ireland. So the question for the rest of us is straight and simple. Are we prepared to do the work with them? And the answer must be yes, yes, and yes again. Our young people will change housing. Locked out of affordable homes, locked into extortionate rent, living in a society where children grow up in hotel rooms. Government after government has failed on housing. That's the truth. Targets set, targets missed. Deadlines set, deadlines missed. Big on promises, short on delivery. Well, young people are calling this out and we will work with them to deliver the biggest affordable and social housing programme that Ireland has ever seen. Our young people will change healthcare. We saw during COVID-19 how student nurses and midwives put everything on the line. Those who have kept our health services together for decades taught them well. They demonstrated the skill and compassion innate in all of those who work in health services across Ireland. This generation has no time for inequality in healthcare, refuse to accept tired excuses that leave more than one and a half million people on waiting lists, or the jaded alibis that give people on, leave people on hospital trolleys. They know overcrowded two-tier health systems do not work that a border in healthcare does not work. We need a fair health service. We need a national health service for all of Ireland. We now have, we now have Ocht Gaelge. We now have Ocht Gaelge. Ta Arndini Oga passion to fui Gaelge. Is Leru Eid the spirit and Shanukal Tirgan Changa Tirgan Anam? Is Maryal Urhuguil Avio Kon Kultura Nu Aim Shira Fuilan Shol? Is the Harava Bashan Agas of Winyuv? Agasan Queen or Glockshid Lid Dadanis Lu Avurimer Akt Nagailga? Is Eid Natreha Kena Sha, a Spragi Gail Gori Natauki, Agas Pyokt Akur, Ahurs Nakyantar Gail Tukta? Tan avio concha mar hostiyot eg shin fein. We now approach. We now approach our first normal Christmas for three years, a time of great excitement, and yet there is a tension and uncertainty as the bills stack up. Government has been far too slow to respond. Long before Russia invaded Ukraine, living costs were out of control. You felt it in your pocket every day. Government had to be forced into action by the opposition and by public pressure, forced to curb soaring fuel, gas and electricity prices, forced to introduce a winter eviction ban, forced to provide relief for renters. Now they drag their heels as mortgage holders are walloped with interest hikes, just like they drag their heels on rip-off insurance costs. Well, rest assured, Pierce Doherty will not let this drop. <laughs> you shouldn't have to force your government to protect you. Government should be up and at it, on your side. We need that government with ideas that can plan, that can deliver. A strong and vibrant economy is core to our vision for Ireland. We will support innovation, new ideas and new businesses to succeed. A strong economy needs certainty, affordable housing, good public services, modern infrastructure and energy security. The energy crisis makes one thing very clear. Our island must achieve energy security and energy independence. We can achieve this by harnessing our abundant renewable resources, building on our capacity in wind, solar and green hydrogen. 
and the state must make Ireland's energy revolution a priority. Energy independence will be a game changer for Ireland, transforming our economy, creating new jobs, opportunity, prosperity, central in turning the tide of climate change and achieving a just transition. So we need action, we need a plan, and we need pace. We must sort out delays in our planning system. We must invest in our ports so we can pursue offshore energy, work in collaboration with business, semi-states, and international partners to realize investment opportunities. This moment cannot be wasted. Accordia, we live in the end days of partition. On the cusp of an historic opportunity, the reunification of our country and our people, shaping a future for everyone, moving forward in the belief that there is no them, there's only us, us that call Ireland home. We can build a nation home for all our people. Some are apprehensive about Irish unity. I want you to know that in a new Ireland, you will be cherished, included, respected as equal citizens. This is your place. This is your home. Be part of shaping its future. <laughs> others, others, well, others say yes to unity, but not now. They're wrong. The time to plan for peaceful, democratic, constitutional change is now. The days of treading water are over. The Irish government must immediately establish a citizens' assembly on unity. And if this government refuses to hear tomorrow coming, if it does not establish a citizens' assembly, Sinn Féin in government will. The future is ours for the making, so we need the right leadership with the right ideas. Sinn Féin is ready to provide that leadership, ready to lead government north and south. We have the team, the policies, the energy to build that future. We will get the basics right in the here and now and drive ambitious plans for the future. To everyone watching tonight, I'm asking you to give us that chance to lead, to deliver for you, your family, your community, for all of Ireland. Give us that chance, that chance to lead, and we will get the work done. Friends, the Ireland we shape today is our legacy for future generations. This is our moment to write our chapter in our nation's story. We face challenges, but this is a time of hope and opportunity. So let's do big things. Let's change Ireland. Let's choose courage, ambition, belief. Let's be the generation that unites our country and our people. Let's build the nation home for all. No one left out, nobody left behind. Our people are ready for change and Sinn Féin is ready to lead. Ireland has seen some great days, but our greatest days lie ahead. Days of unity, equality, prosperity, days that belong to everyone. Friends, that's a future worth believing in, worth working for, worth achieving. I say we can do it. 
I say we must do it. My friends, Irish men and Irish women, I say we will do it. And we will do it together. We will change Ireland together, unite Ireland together. Gurumila Mila Mahagwiv Galair is on Fublock Abu.